again. Dash is in my lap. I think you can see a little piece of him. We want to tell you about hidden talents today. Um, today, we know that Martin has discovered his friend's um, talents and that they've kind of agreed that, yeah, those talents exist. So my question to you is, what would you do with these kids' talents? Um, I had a ton of other questions in my head to ask you. However, this one seemed like the one that would bring out the most thoughts. I don't just want, oh, I would blah. I want you to think about what are all the possibilities with these various talents? And furthermore, how would you work to make your talents more controllable? Hopefully you'll think about that as I read this chapter. Um, this chapter is called Now What? The others accepted trash pretty quickly. I guess it wasn't hard for them to realize they shared a rare and common bond, especially Torchy and Trash. Since the two of them had the most destructive powers, they'd gotten into the most trouble. For the first week, I had to walk down the hall and invite Trash to our room each evening. Hey, why don't you come over and hang out with us? You sure? Yeah, come on. But then he started popping in by himself. I guess it had been a long time since anyone had welcomed him anywhere. I knew what that felt like. Trash certainly added some excitement to our lives. We were never sure when he'd launch a book across the room or tip a chair, dumping out whoever was sitting in it. I learned to keep an eye on Flinch. As soon as he ducked, I knew it was time to hug the carpet and cover my head. Sounds like a relaxing evening. The word we heard the most from Trash was, sorry. I finally told him to knock it off. It was Friday, but we decided not to sneak out of the school. We didn't want to ditch trash, but we didn't think the town of Edgeview was ready for a visit from him. Besides, one of those bitter, cold, mid-February storms had made the trip less appealing than usual. So we were hanging out in the room. Torchy was playing the harmonica. All of a sudden, his chair jolted as if someone had given it a hard kick. It didn't move far enough to knock him off, but it sure got his attention. Whoa! Torchy shouted as, as he jumped from his seat. Sorry, Trash said. No big deal, Torchy told him. He sat back down and returned to the 39th chorus of Red River Valley. A minute later, Cheater screamed and leaped from the floor where he'd been sitting. As he twisted around, he saw the back of his underwear hanging over the top of his jeans. Wow, I said amazed at the sight. That's got to be the world's biggest wedgie. Sorry, Trash said. Did you do that to him on purpose? Lucky asked as Cheater straightened out his clothing. No way, Trash said. I'd never touch anybody's underwear on purpose. Not even with my mind. And he shuddered. Yeah, Flinch said. If you did that, you'd need to get brainwashed. Before I could laugh, a pencil flew from my desk and plunked against the side of my head just hard enough to make me say, ouch. Sorry. Trash picked up the pencil and put it back on the desk. How about you just say sorry once a day, I suggested. Say it in the morning, and that'll cover whatever happens during the next 24 hours, okay? I'll try. He dropped his gaze to the floor for a moment, but then looked back up. He reminded me of a puppy who'd just been scolded. I glanced around the room. Everyone happy with that? Sure, Torchy said. Fine with me. The others nodded. And you, I said, staring at Flinch. Stop it with the sneezing thing. Someone is going to figure out what's happening. You did it again this afternoon in science. Flinch had fallen into a habit of saying Gesundheit right before any of us sneezed. That afternoon, he'd even handed me a tissue. He must have been keeping it ready, just waiting for an opportunity. He'd reached over and thrust it into my hand during class and whispered, Bless you. A half second later, I sneezed. It's a good thing Mr. Briggs hadn't been looking. You have to knock it off, I said. Flinch grinned, and doing a great imitation of trash, he hung down his head and said, I'm sorry. It's not funny, Cheater said. If they find out about us, bad things are going to happen. People hate anyone who's different. Yeah, they could cut us up to figure out how we work, Lucky said. That's, I almost said crazy, but I caught myself in time. Not going to happen. Or lock us in a room, Cheater said. You know... Use us for weapons or as spies. He walked over and blew out a small fire that had started smoldering in the wastebasket. I love the author's details with stuff like that. They wouldn't do that, Torchy said, but we'd probably get split up if they found out. It's like a secret weapon, Lucky said. It works best if nobody knows about it. We can't tell anyone. I'll work even better if you learn to control it, I said. 
As those words left my lips, Torchy's pillow shot across the room and whizzed past Flinch's head. Naturally, he dodged aside a second earlier. So, Trash started to say, oops. How can we control it? Torchy asked. Trash shook his head. I can't. I've tried. Me too, Cheater said. There has to be something we can do. Torchy looked at me as if I had all the answers in the world. So did the others. Hey, Marty. Thanks for the hair clip, and it's not exactly my birthday. Thanks for the ticket, too. That brought back memories. Dad's angry at Mom for something, not sure what. I think he's angry with me, too, but it's hard to tell. I sure haven't done anything wrong. Guess who? What? I was flipping the dial, and I caught a bunch of people way up on Channel 6 Billion or somewhere around there arguing about your school. I don't know what they were all concerned about. It was too boring to leave on. So I switched to that show where they talk about lawn mowing. But I figured you'd be happy to hear you were sorta on television. Your spectacular sister, Terry. P.S. I made lasagna last night. Is it supposed to be crunchy? Ooh. Yuck. Burning questions. The next chapter I'll read. Or at least part of it. The truth is, I'd been thinking about this a lot, and I had plenty of ideas. But how could I tell them what to do when I didn't even know what it was like to have special powers? That would be like a cat trying to teach a dog to bark. Besides, Cheater and Flinch were both a lot smarter than I was. One of them should be in charge. Come on, Flinch said. You've got to have some ideas. I shook my head. Please, Martin, Torchy said. Why was it so hard to say no to him? Okay. I guess I have a couple of ideas. Maybe if, if, if I help Torchy a little, someone else would take over and I could step back. We better start with you. How come? He asked. Well, if Cheetah reads a mind or Flinch sees what's about to happen, it's no big deal. Lucky isn't doing any harm to anyone. Trash could hurt someone, I guess, but Trash mostly throws small stuff, right? Right, Torchy said. But you can burn this place to the ground, I told him. So I figure you need to control you need control more than anyone. Torchy shrugged. I guess. So we're not going to do anything for the rest of us, Cheater asked? Sure, I said. We'll work with everyone. But your problem isn't that hard. Someone will come up with something. I bet there's an easy solution. No, there isn't, Cheater said. If there was, I'd have figured he paused and a smile spread across his face. I get it. Obviously, Cheater had plucked the idea as it ran through my mind. It was kind of spooky knowing my thoughts could end up inside his head. There were things in my mind I'd never want anyone to know, but he still didn't know it had come from me. Get what? Flinch asked, looking in my direction. Yeah, Martin Torchy said. Tell us. It's no great idea or anything. Now that Cheater realizes he might be tapping into other people's thoughts, all he has to do for tests is to use different words, I explained. Suppose he's taking a history test, and the answer he wants to write is General Sherman led his troops on march through Georgia. The trick is to change it around a bit. He can write, under his command, General Sherman's troops marched through Georgia, or something like that, just so he doesn't use exactly the same words as the kids around him. I was sure that would work. Cheater knew so much that he wouldn't have any trouble finding different ways to write test answers. Yeah, Flinch said. That's a great idea. I wish you had some easy answers for me. I'd been thinking about that too, but I'd already gotten enough attention. I kept silent. Well, someone in this room has an answer, Cheater said. It looked like there weren't going to be any secrets with this group. I figured I might as well tell Flinch my idea. I have an answer, but it'll take some work. I leaped across the room and threw a punch at Cheater's face. He ducked before I even had my fist halfway out. My hand shot through the air where his head had been. I had to put out my other hand to keep from smacking face first into the wall. Hey, what was that for? Flint shouted. Practice, I told him. You need to learn to hold back a bit. Try not to jump so soon this time. Good thinking, Flint said. Come on, let's try it again. I threw another punch. Flint waited too long. Before I could stop myself, my fist connected with his jaw. A sharp jolt shot through my wrist. Oh man, I said as he went down. Are you okay? Flinch shook his head hard, then staggered back to his feet. Yeah, he rubbed his jaw. 
I guess sooner would have been better. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I hurt you? My whole hand was starting to ache. Not really, Flinch said. It's just that I've never been punched in the face before. I can't say that I like it. Never, I asked. Never, he said. I've always managed to get out of the way. Come on, let's try it again. You sure? He nodded. I threw another punch. Flinch dodged too soon, but not as soon as he usually did. Better, I said. Can I hit him next? Cheater asked. He swung his hand in a karate chop. I thought you didn't know any of that stuff, I said. I don't, Cheater said, but it looks like fun. Flinch glared at Cheater. Hang on, I said. Everyone will get plenty of time punching Flinch. Right now, let's work with Torchy, okay? They nodded. Oh, dear. <laughs> we need something that can put out fires, I said. No problem, Lucky dashed out of the room. I figured he was going to dig through the loot in his closet. Sure enough, when he came back, he handed me a small blue plastic squirt gun. It was the old-fashioned kind with a squeeze trigger, not the kind that gets pumped up. A drop of water hanging off the plug in the back showed me he'd just filled the gun. Now what? Torchy asked. I tossed the, pits, the water pistol to flinch. Then I tore a piece of paper from my notebook and passed it to Torchy. See if you can light it on fire. Try to pay attention to anything happening in your mind. Once you figure out how you do it, then maybe you can get some control. I looked over at Flinch. Your job is to make sure he doesn't get burned. Got it, Flinch nodded. We all watched the piece of paper in Torchy's hand. Suddenly, Flinch said, look out, and scored at the paper. Hey, Torchy shouted, why'd you do that? As he spoke, a bit of steam rose from the damp paper. This isn't going to work, I said to Flinch. You're reacting before it happens. Let someone else do it. But I could use this for practice, Flinch said. It beats getting punched in the face. I can try to wait until the flame really starts. Yeah, but it doesn't beat getting burned fingers, Torchy said. If you wait too long, I'll get hurt. You won't get burned, Flinch told him. You're right, I won't, Torchy said, because you aren't going to be the one with the squirt gun. Hold it, I shouted. Stop arguing. Cheater, you take the water pistol. Everyone else, watch the paper and see if you notice anything. We won't get anything done if everyone is fighting. Yes, Dad, Flinch joked. Oh, man, he was right. I sounded like a parent shouting at a couple of kids who were horsing around in the back seat of a car. That's the last thing I wanted. I kept my mouth shut and concentrated on watching the paper in Torchy's hand. Torchy managed to start a couple more fires, but he didn't seem to have any idea how he was doing it. Enough, he said after a half an hour. He slumped back in his chair. You know, I bet there are a lot of people out there with special powers, Flinch said. Maybe, I said. But don't go wild and start thinking every coincidence is an example of psychic powers. It has to be rare, or we'd know a lot more about it. I thought about the two dozen names on my list. One by one, I crossed off every one except Lucky. I'm sure my grandfather was psychic, Torchy said. Flinch laughed. Yeah, right. What did he do, carry a bucket of water whenever he knew you were coming? No, really, Torchy said. He had a special talent. Anytime I got hurt, he seemed to know where, even if I didn't tell him about it. If I got a shot, he patted me on the shoulder. If I had a sunburn, he slapped me on the back. He wasn't trying to hurt me. He just had a knack for finding my sore spots. Suddenly, everyone could think of examples of friends or relatives who might have had psychic powers. I let them talk for a while, but then got back to work trying to control our group's powers. As for Lucky, that seems simple enough. Just don't pick up stuff like wallets and jewelry, I said. Then you won't be accused of stealing. Yeah, that'll work, he said, but something in his voice worried me. Well, unless he wanted to tell me more, there was nothing I could do. Meanwhile, there was plenty to keep me busy. I made up some tests so Cheater could practice rephrasing his answers while we all sat around him. Every once in a while, no matter what we were doing, I threw a punch at Flinch. Cheater was right. It was fun. And then there was trash. Trash was amazing. PSI, short, popular, used to describe various psychic phenomena. Empath, one who actually experiences or intimately understands the feelings of others. Synergy, the power of a group to achieve an effect greater than they could have achieved as individuals. Whew. Let's see what's next. And that's the end of that chapter, so I'll catch you all next time.
and we'll read Why I Like Being Me by Willis Flinch Dawson.